Welcome to EM Cases Rapid Reviews, where we review the take-home points from the EM Cases main episode podcasts so you can ace your exams and take stellar care of your patients. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Claridge, and welcome to another edition of Emergency Medicine Cases Rapid Review. Today, we're going to get you through an approach to a common emergency medicine problem, hyponatremia. Hold on tight, because here we go. In part one of the series, we're going to tell you exactly why hyponatremia is important to recognize and give you an approach that you can use with your next patient so that you can expertly and effectively manage patients with hyponatremia. Why are we so worried about hyponatremia? Why do we care about correcting, not correcting, doing too much, doing too little? It's because of two outcomes we want to avoid. If we don't do enough and the sodium goes uncorrected, we can get cerebral edema. If we correct too quickly, we can get osmotic demyelination syndrome. Both are bad. And believe it or not, sodium values less than 135 have a linear relationship with in-hospital mortality. So you can see why we need a logical, stepwise approach to managing these patients. And that's exactly what we're gonna give you. The approach can be broken down into five core principles. First and foremost is to treat neurological emergencies. If there are no neurological emergencies present, then in step two, we defend the intravascular volume. Third, you want to prevent worsening of the hyponatremia. And fourth, you want to prevent rapid overcorrection. Finally, fifth, you want to ascertain a cause. Let's dive right into it. One, treat neurological emergencies. These patients are easy to pick out. They are either seizing, coning, or in a coma. Not just a little drowsy or slightly confused. This, and only this, is the time do we pull out the big gun, hypertonic saline. This is a life-threatening condition that requires the rapid correction of sodium. Give 150 cc's over five to 10 minutes, then reassess. If the patient is still seizing, then repeat 150 cc's again. This should raise the sodium by five to six millimoles per liter. After the second bolus, you're done. Stop all fluids and don't let the sodium go up anymore for the rest of the day. So if there are no neurological emergencies, move to step two. Here we want to defend the intravascular volume. How do we do that? First, determine the volume status of the patient and whether they are hypovolemic, euvolemic, or hypervolemic. Now, I know this can be tricky in the emergency department, but start by reviewing the history and checking the blood pressure and the heart rate. Maybe have a glance at the JVP and check for sacral or pedal edema. For those savvy with the ultrasound, take a look at the IVC in the heart. If the patient is hypovolemic, in other words, they're hypotensive and tachycardic, the priority is to restore adequate circulating volume. We recommend giving ringers in small boluses to improve the blood pressure. Compared with normal saline, this leads to a lower rise in the serum sodium. The euvolemic patient is all good. They don't need any defense and the treatment should concentrate on preventing worsening of the hyponatremia. Now the hypervolemic patients are often those with failure of some sort, can be from liver, kidney, heart. They need salt restriction, water restriction, and furosemide. Now that the intravascular volume has been defended, we can move on to the next step, preventing worsening of the hyponatremia. The patient needs to be strict NPO, no fluids. Take that apple juice from the bedside and throw it out. Let the patient and the family members know that the water is the enemy and can kill them. Saline lock them and make sure no hypotonic fluids are ordered. The more you restrict them, the better. The fourth step is to prevent rapid overcorrection. This is quite possibly the most important step. It gets us out of a jam. Like when we've just thrown a liter of fluids at that hypovolemic patient, not realizing that they were also hyponatremic or that we've been forced to defend the intravascular volume, or have had to treat a neurological emergency with hypertonic saline. The key to this step is monitoring the urine output. I'm going to give you a super simple rule that doesn't involve a long, complicated calculation. It's called the rule of a hundreds. If the urine output is greater than 100 milliliters per hour, then send a stat urine osmols. If the urine osmols is less than 100, then give DDAVP to prevent further sodium rise. If the urine osmols is greater than 100, sit tight and keep monitoring the urine output. Monitor hourly, and if over 100, 
Then again, send off a fresh urine osmoles. If you follow this rule, you will never overcorrect. For those of you who like hard numbers and want an easy way to remember the rate of sodium rise that you want to avoid, I give you the rule of sixes. Six millimoles per liter in the first six hours for those patients with severe symptoms, i.e. neurological emergencies, and for all other patients, six millimoles per liter per day. Okay, so now you've identified the neurological emergencies and treated them, defended the intravascular volume, prevented worsening of the hyponatremia, and prevented overcorrection, the next step is to determine the cause. A good way to remember the different causes is to think about it in terms of the sections on a chart. Start with the chief complaint. Does the patient have reduced oral intake, been vomiting, or have been drinking a couple beers? Next look at the past medical history. Do they have end organ failure, like liver, renal, or cardiac? Do they have a history of lung cancer or brain cancer that is often associated with SIADH? Review any medications. Are they on any that might cause SIADH, like SSRIs? Are they on a thiazide diuretic? Or on oral or inhaled steroids, possibly leading to adrenal insufficiency? And check out the blood work. Is there hyperglycemia that's giving you pseudo-hyponatremia? Potassium is key here. If it's high, then this could represent adrenal insufficiency. If low, then you're going to want to correct that, as correcting the hypokalemia can improve the hyponatremia. That brings us to the end of the five core principles. Let's review. First, treat the neurological emergencies. Second, defend the intravascular volume. Third, prevent worsening of the hyponatremia. And fourth, prevent rapid overcorrection by the rule of 100s. And finally, determine the cause. Hope this helps and see you next time. Thank you.